Welcome to our first edition of BNC Insider, your weekly recap of everything that's happening in the world of brand new Congress. I'm Adrian Bell, Executive Director for BNC, and I'm with Troy Hewitt, our Deputy Executive Director. Hey, Troy. Hey, Adrian. How are you? I'm doing well. Good, uh, good first show unto you. Exciting for our episode one. And in this issue, we are going to talk about important voting deadlines, brand new legislation from members of our BNC slate that have been elected to Congress, Cori Bush, Jamal Bowman, and Rashida Tlaib. We're on the ground in Asheville with Odessa Kelly, who's running in Tennessee 7. New additions to the BNC slate and the Social Media Power Hour with Team Fetterman, plus more ways to take action. Hey, Troy, let's get ready to dive in. Let's do it. Why don't we start with this? Election Day is now less than 45 days away. Wow. It's GOTV time. And you know very well, Adrian, GOTV is, it's a scramble. Yes. It is a scramble. In-person voting is already underway in parts of Pennsylvania and Vermont, and the polls open in Michigan. Early voting varies from state to state and sometimes from county to county as designed. And so we've got some resources that we'll share, not the least of which, and it was a bit of a surprise to me, USA Today has the early voting 2022 schedule. They talk about when early and in-person absentee voting starts in each state which is mm-hmm. excellent. Of course, we've got uh, Ballotpedia you want to check out and get a little information on who's running, but also just when. Absolutely. You know, this election is so important. And we always talk about midterm elections that a lot of people don't turn out. And so the turnout vote is so very, very uh, important. So we are asking that you do not let these deadlines sneak up on you because election is how many days away, Troy? What did you less, say? Less than 45. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, we want to emphasize that you go and vote early, that you do not wait until November the 8th. But whenever the election starts in your county or your city, that you go vote. And you can also uh, visit vote.org to check your voter registration status, to look up deadlines for requesting a ballot and find your polling place and much, much more. That's right. You know, Adrian, as progressives, we are always late to the polls. No, we're not, Troy. Oh, I'm telling you. I'm <laughs> telling you. And you know, it's nail biting. It's nail biting. Uh, exactly. You know, maybe uh, we don't understand why it is so important to vote early. When you vote early and you've cast your votes, it does help candidates and campaigns know how the vote is going. And when you're looking for a certain amount of voter turnout in certain counties that are polling your way, when their counts are high, you know that your supporters are turning out. And then when your supporters are not turning out, you know that these are areas you need to target to go knock on doors, to call people to say, hey, go vote. So make a plan, go vote early because our democracy depends on it. And remember to ask your family and your friends to vote and then hold them accountable and take some folks to the polls with you. Sound advice. What do we have going on on the Hill, Troy? In D.C., Congress is back in session and our brand new Congress reps wasted zero time getting down to business. And here's what they have done. Two weeks ago, Representatives Cory Bush, Jamal Bowman and Rashida Tlaib, they jointly introduced the resolution recognizing the human rights to utilities. Hmm. And now. When I first heard that, I thought, what could that mean? Right. And here's what it means very in very clear language, very specific, like every angle has been covered here. This resolution would recognize access to water, sanitation, electricity, heating, cooling, public transit, and broadband communications as basic human rights, as public services that must be accessible, safe, acceptable, sufficient, affordable, justly sourced, and sustainable, climate resilient, and reliable for every person. Wow, that actually says a lot. And to include broadband communications is huge because we do know that not everyone has 
broadband communications. And we really found that out with COVID and moving schools to uh, remote schooling and finding out that we every student, even in larger cities, did not have access to broadband. And we could really see the digital divide in our neighborhoods and, and in our communities. So for this resolution to include broadband communications, and it is it is not just a luxury, broadband communications is a necessity in it our society. Is. Yeah, it's your connection to your doctor, to your yes. family to your yes. job, to your job prospects, like that's where it's happening. Um, it's right. also the place, it's our it's our new town square. And you know, I applaud our BNC representatives. If you're a fan of brand new Congress, which everyone I'm certain is, this harkens back to the 21st century Bill of Rights. And mm-hmm. we have that work in 2017 translated through to now. It is one of those moments where I say, okay, maybe things are are moving in the right direction. Right. And it's being accountable as an elected official to what you campaign on. Uh, Being able to come up and write policy, get policy approved that benefits regular working people where clean water is a right. When we think of Jackson, Mississippi, uh, just a few weeks ago, and even now, where they can't use their water. And water is an essential to life. And when it's been tainted and polluted and you cannot access it, then that needs to be treated as a basic human right. And and you know what's, what's sad is that this has to become a resolution. But it has to. And and it had to. Here in Texas, when our electricity grid failed during the winter storm and we had over 700 Texans who froze to death because we had no electricity to provide heat. And we don't have the insulation in our homes that happen in uh, like up north where, you know, it's cold and you are accustomed to those type of climates. That's right. And you better prepare. We're not prepared for cold weather here but it but it wasn't just our preparation as the people it was the greed of our leadership in this state that has allowed this to happen and it has not yet been fixed yeah and that's uh that's still a problem uh, but it is a right for us to have electricity and heating and cooling and public trans transit so I'm with you I definitely applaud our congressional members, uh, Corey Bush and Jamal Bowman and Rashida Tlaib, in introducing this resolution to recognize that we have a right as humans in America to have utilities. So thank y'all so much for doing the work on the Hill. We're proud. Yes, we are. And we're going to continue to grow progressives in uh, Congress Uh, Because this is what we need, regular working people who identify and understand the needs of regular working people, and they create policy that makes a difference. Absolutely. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to talk a little bit about something going on in Nashville when we return. You know, contrary to what you might have heard, and maybe even what you might feel, right now, it's a great time to be a progressive in America. When you look at the issues we face today, it could appear on the surface that the deck is stacked against us. From all angles, the fight is real. And you wouldn't be wrong. Hey America, it's Troy Hewitt. I'm the Deputy Executive Director for Brand New Congress. I've been with the organization for about four years now. When I look back, reflecting on how far we've come, in even just the four years of work with Brand New Congress. It's undeniable that the work we have done has permanently changed the face of modern American politics. Now, I think that is why the fight has intensified. I believe that the GOP is in a panic. Now, the Republicans have demonstrated, and some Democrats, that... Time and time again, they're willing to say anything, do anything they can to stop progress. 
I believe we're scaring them with visions of universal health care and freedom from mounting predatory debt. As the closer we get to these, vi these victories, the harder they try. And that's why we've got to elect more working class progressives who can't be bought by special interests and who refuse corporate PAC money. We've got a chance to grow progressive power and double or more the number of BNC representatives in office this November. Now, if you're like me and you believe that clean drinking water and safe housing, uh, utilities, if you believe these are human rights, would you pitch in 25 days, 25 days, would you pitch in $25 today to elect more BNC representatives who will fight for us? Time is running short. The fight continues. And you can help. Consider donating today. Brandnewcongress.org slash donate. Adrian, would you consider giving 25 days? <laughs> I consider giving $25. <laughs> You've given well over 25 days. <laughs> Speaking of which, given, given some days, you went to Nashville. I did. And I did not go for the country music. Or the hot chicken. Well, I did have chicken. I love that chicken so much. Yeah. But I, I, yeah. I went and because of Odessa Kelly who's running in Tennessee seven and Odessa had a community event and it was an afternoon of music, food, love, and the truth talking about how we can flip Tennessee blue. If you don't know Odessa Kelly, I invite you to visit our website at brandnewcongress.org and click on Odessa Kelly. But Odessa is a community worker. And she is in love with the people of Tennessee. Yeah, she is. She is exactly the type of congressional representative that we need in Tennessee. And I say this all the time, Troy, because I'm in a, a red part of Texas that when Odessa gets elected to office in Tennessee, she will also represent me here in Texas because the people in Tennessee 7 will vote her in, but when she casts a vote in Congress, her vote will count for me as well. Oh, yeah. And I had the most wonderful time in Nashville with Odessa Kelly. The crowd was energized and fired up to turn out the vote for Odessa in uh, Nashville. They have been knocking on doors. They've been talking to the people, making phone calls, and really being involved in the community because we know that's where it's at and that's how we win. So I was so excited to be out and supporting Odessa Kelly in her run for Congress. And we so look forward on November the 8th when Odessa makes history and becomes the representative in Tennessee 7. Now listen, Nashville, early voting starts in just over 30 days. Yes. Get there early. Don't leave her hanging. I got to tell you, Adrian, I'm with you. Odessa is, um, Odessa is a force to be reckoned with for sure, but uh, a just an agent of change through inspiration, motivation, connection, authenticity. I mean, you just see it the yes. minute you are in, within her proximity. Um, exactly. Yeah. She's so passionate. And Odessa is an athlete. So for all the athletes out there, athletes are competitive and they are conditioned and they are team members and they believe in the group and not just the one person. So it's not about Odessa. Odessa could have, when the maps, the new maps were drawn and Nashville was split into three congressional districts because of gerrymandering and the need and the want to suppress black voters. And so the state led, you know, drew it into three different districts. Odessa could have gotten out of that race, but she didn't. And that's what I admire about her is the integrity to say, no, I'm in this for Tennessee 7 and I'm staying. That's and right. Yeah. She's running and she's running hard. And I so admire that. 
because uh, she's in there for the long haul. Absolutely. You know, 14 years as a civil servant, she co-founded Stand Up Nashville, a nonprofit uh, community org that fights for working families. And it, she is of the community. And you really, you know, there is, there is a distinct difference in the way things feel when a person running for office is that engaged. Yes. Yes, absolutely. You know, they are the real deal. Yeah, yeah. And you, and, you uh, feel yeah. that and you and, see it. And they want you to come with, like you're exactly. a part of it. Uh, that's exactly. Fantastic. Exactly. And, and you know that you are. And it is, we came back with an Odessa Kelly uh, yard sign um, on the plane. Yeah. And uh, it was considered a, um, a carry-on item. <laughs> and so oh, okay. we traveled back in style. I love it. We could have uh, her yard side, and I'm really tempted to put it up in my yard. I think you should. <laughs> and I'm really tempted to want to get one of those myself, uh, yeah. and including all the merch. It's got great merch, of course. And uh, yeah, and it's Odessa Kelly for Congress um, dot com, I believe. And we'll double check that. Um, but of course, you can go to uh, brandnewcongress.org, as Adrian suggested. Check out the candidates. You will see um, at the. Yeah, we've got all the things there, everything from TikTok to uh, to her um, Twitter. So, yeah, check that out. Um, and uh, I am everything is crossed, all my fingers and my toes. And uh, I'll tell you, it's really difficult not to say I need to take a little time and go down to Nashville. Oh, yeah. Knock yeah. on some doors. But um, but they're yeah, putting yeah. in the work. They, they are, are putting in it. the work. She has a lot of labor support and they are putting in the work. Good on SEIU for coming out and showing up. They do. They do. They always do. Um, yes. Yeah. I, I, uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, of how they mobilize. Yes. So go follow Odessa on her social media channels and find out about Odessa Kelly. She is a star out in Nashville. Oh, yeah. Love her. Absolutely. And she is she is the exact type of uh, congressional representative that we need. So we need more Odessa Kellys in Congress. And this would be a seat where we actually flip it from red to blue. Yeah. Yep. A lot riding on it. Mm hmm. Yes, it is. So had a great time in Nashville uh, with Odessa Kelly. And then we have a new addition to our slate. That's right. We really do. And, uh, you know, we're talking, of course, about John Fetterman. Yes. And uh, so we unveiled our newest member to, of the slate. And uh, th this guy, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, AmeriCorps, um, his 13 years as mayor of Braddock and nearly four years as lieutenant governor of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. uh, did you know that he doesn't live in the mansion? Really? Yeah, he lives in uh, he and his family live in, I believe it is a renovated uh, car, like a, a car repair place. But he's, you know, the mansion comes with a pool. And okay. he has um, created a program for kids to come swim there that may not have access to a, a pool in their neighborhood. Wow. John that, Fetterman gets it. Yeah, he really does. And he is uh, he's on top of it. And uh, not to mention that this heated this race, it is I mean, Fetterman is a public servant to yes. the core and he's in this race to flip the uh open u.s senate seat in pennsylvania against this mm -hmm. uh, you know i hesitate to say even out of touch it just he is so alien it just seems as though he's not even from this planet so i'm not sure how he could have been in touch to begin but uh <laughs> you know he is a trump endorsed uh, crudite fan um none other than uh, dr oz so oz yeah, you know, and if he doesn't win, he has a fine, um, you know, sort of uh, work ahead as a snake oil salesman or, you know, something or a crudite, um, you know, purveyor. But uh, we uh, just need him out of it. We do. We just need him. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. it is one of the most important elections of the cycle. And it's uh, it is the race most likely to flip. I feel it. I think he's going to do it. Um, and uh you know, and it may be the seat that determines the majority control of the Senate. Like right. that's huge. Right. 
Right. Fetterman is doing a really good job running a really uh, great campaign and doing what needs to be done to win in Pennsylvania. So we are in tiptoe anticipation yes. of him sending Dr. Oz back to wherever Dr. Oz lives because it's not Pennsylvania and we can get on the business of democracy in America. That's right. That's right. So we're looking forward to electing um, John Fetterman and really uh, supporting him out in Pennsylvania. So uh do want to mention that uh, originally our former BNC uh, Senate candidate was Malcolm Kenyatta in Pennsylvania. And Kenyatta has wasted no time in getting to work uh, to elect John. And I find that to be such um, integrity and such wholesomeness from Kenyatta because Kenyatta proved that it's not about him. It's about what needs to happen in Pennsylvania and what needs to happen in this country. So he has been touring the state, holding events and fundraisers. He has been a relentless advocate for John Fetterman to beat um, Dr. Oz. So we really applaud Kenyatta, who is out there, putting himself out there. And one thing that uh, Kenyatta uh, had to say about his support for Fetterman, that uh, Pennsylvania has a huge choice, and I'm quoting this, Pennsylvania has a huge choice to make in November. We can elect an out-of-touch, an out-of-state multimillionaire, or we can elect John Fetterman. No brainer, is it? It it is a no brainer. And I do want to say I was so proud to be affiliated and associated with uh, Malcolm Kenyatta when it was time to to uh, to get in there and show support and make this happen. Kenyatta was there. Like you said, uh, it took no time because he knows he really cares about what's going on in Pennsylvania. And so you to see progressives come together like this is what needs to happen. That's right. Um, because it's about the progressive movement. It's about people. And so uh, Pennsylvania is showing such unity that when people are united together, it's hard to defeat a united people. So right. I am looking forward to Pennsylvania, John Fetterman, and having waving that victory flag on November 8th. You and me both. You and me both. So now we're kind of at the time when we want to talk about taking action, talking about Charles Booker, John Fetterman. Yes. These two gentlemen and their campaign team, they run relational organizing events. These are phone banking opportunities. These are the social media power hour. We're going to provide links to the, to their events. I'm looking at Team Booker. Uh, they have a phone bank opportunity Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. They do these events on on the regular. And mm-hmm. in addition to that, Fetterman's does the the social media power hour on Thursdays. But you know what? Things are going to move. Things are going to change. They're going to add more opportunities, and it's our time to help right. both of these candidates. And we can do it. And that is a tremendous impact. No matter where you live, you can uh, assist in this effort. And you want to check in with the campaigns and figure that stuff out. When they need you to be there, we'll be there. And we will share links to their uh, event website uh, over on Mobilize. And the thing about Mobilize, it's phenomenal. Uh, It's all right there. You can sign up in one-stop shop. Get your email notifications. You get some text reminders. Uh, we'll share those links. They'll be a part of the show notes as well. Can I, can I just say something right quick about the importance of phone banking? Yes, please. Being an organizer and uh, setting up phone banks and, and really training people to make phone calls to uh, constituents, it is really important that we understand that phone banking is one of the best methods to reach people. And a lot of times you hear people say, oh, nobody answered their phone anymore. That's not true. The best way to reach constituents is to knock on their doors and call them on the phone. And so if you can participate and call some people on the phone, you may get 5% response. But that 5% that you get, those are voters. When you talk to them, tell them about the candidate, get their support, help them make a plan to go vote. 
tell them where they need to go vote. You are actually getting a vote for Team Booker or whoever you're calling for from across the country. And that is so important because you'll start talking to people and, and even have conversations and they find out, hey, I'm in, you're in Seattle, but you're calling me in Kentucky to go vote for Charles Booker. That's powerful stuff. So I don't want uh, our listeners to just bypass phone bank opportunities because it is so important. It is so key to help candidates win. That's so right. Please participate in uh, these virtual events, in these phone banking opportunities. Uh, when you can't go there to help knock on doors, you can make some phone calls and they need you to do that. They do. It also lends a strategic opportunity for the campaign to understand sentiment of a particular group of people and to yes. look at those people and, and rank them kind of where they're standing and where they're sitting as far as this uh of their you know feelings on the election and and who they want to vote for and it gives the campaign the opportunity to amplify that touch to get somebody to their house to get information to them to provide them detail um you know it is it's so many different things to the campaign, um, not the least of which it is kind of fun. It really is. I love phone banking because you just get an opportunity to talk to different people uh, that have different uh, values and different viewpoints. And you can just share and you have a connection. Yeah. And I think that is so, so special. So Team Booker is phone banking Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. That's and, right. Yep. Uh, like Troy said, we're going to uh, provide the mobilized link. And then Team Fetterman has virtual events that you can take a party in and you can learn of what's going on behind the scenes. They call it a social media power hour. It's a whole lot of words. Social media power hour uh, <laughs> that you can participate with the uh, John Fetterman campaign. Absolutely. So, we did it, Troy. We did indeed. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And what I like the most about this is that we're going to be doing it every week. Every week. So thank you so much for tuning in to our first BNC Insider. The next one is soon to come. Your host for this episode, Executive Director Adrian Bell and Deputy Executive Director Troy Hewitt. BNC Insider is written by our Communications Director, Corey Archibald with social media and communication support from our social media manager, Angie Hewitt. The BNC Insider is a weekly news and update program produced by Brand New Congress. Follow us on Twitter at Brand New 535. Find us on Facebook and Instagram at Brand New Congress.